Hello and welcome back to Zilla's stream, uh, where I play games with some kind of ancient world content and try to tell you uh, as much as I can with scholarly commentary on them. I am today starting this game Abzu. I'm going in basically blind. I've had it recommended to me by another ancient studies person. I know that the game designers made Journey and Flower and I love both of those games to bits, so this should be fun. Try it now. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Dead man's float. Hopefully not actually dead. I think this is us. Cool little suit. Okay, yes, I'm in control. Press to dive. Press anything? Okay, that's why. Okay, press right trigger to dive. Oh, I see. This is a pretty little seascape. Gorgeous music, as one would expect. I wonder if I need to reverse the camera controls. Yep, and I also need to reverse the swing pitch. I am just not good at using inverted controls. So far, just these uh, pretty little fishies. So, if you've played Journey, you might recognize their little call, which is a, a feature of that game. I still definitely do not have a handle on controls. They go a bit further than I think they should. So let's let's try heading towards where we can see this tunnel. The DJ Trundle bot asking, are the fish accurate to period? I see you.
promise I'll get the hang of the swimming mechanic eventually. It's a nice big fish here. What's up, big fish? Ooh, hold to ride. Awesome. Riding on a fish? Now that is not accurate to period. <laughs> Whatever period is. Oh, look at this beautiful kelp forest. Gosh. It's gorgeous. What are you looking at? So I have no idea what I'm down here looking for. Press Y to interact. <gasps> sea turtles! I love sea turtles! Awesome! Can I interact again? More turtles? Is that another interactable thing? Oh, there's a sea turtle. Can I ride on the turtle? I want to ride on the turtle. Oh, too far. <laughs> I'm wondering about how the um, how this diver is supposed to be functioning without any oxygen tanks. Trumpet fish, huh? Are those? Is that the same thing as remora? I can't remember. What is this? Now, there is some kind of something. Some kind of tech. Little bot scanning us. Very emotive for such a simple bot. <laughs> DJ Trundlebot says the diver was an ancient alien all along. <laughs> So, I guess I made a friend, but I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. Ooh, did I do this one yet? I don't know how to tell. I did not, because apparently that makes leopard sharks. Oh, leopard sharks. They're cool. Hey, buddy. Uh. uh. So... I mean, I guess that definitely tells us this is Earth, right? Because we're getting Earth fish. So are we far future, I guess? Uh, I wonder if it would be this hard to orient ourselves if we're really diving. Any divers in the audience who can tell me? Because I don't know. I guess we already did this one. I feel like I'm gonna miss stuff. Oh, hey, what's that? Well, 
another little bot friend. Okay, so we are assembling a bot army, is what I'm getting. Are we going to take over the sea? Where are we going, bot army? So I have no idea what's going on here, but oh hey, there's another bot. We go in, we fix a thing, and they join us. Nope, too far, too far, too far. <laughs> huh. So we can use a bot to <gasps> break coral. I'm not sure I'm okay with that. Can't spell diversity without divers, honestly. You're just on a roll today. Ooh. Hello, shark friend. Are you friend? Probably friend. Kelp. I'm assuming all are friend until proven otherwise. It's very dark down here. Oh, too far, too far, too far. <laughs> what do we have over here? Ooh. What's that? Shiny object. Okay. I don't know what that did, but I found a shiny. Another tunnel. I mean, this is a, a kelp rich environment. So it must be pretty healthy. Oh, she says as she enters the grimy abyss. Wowza. All right, so what do we got here? Some kind of pollution? This is what I suppose I was looking for. Some kind of city? I guess I'm not close enough. Oh boy. What is that?
Oh. Okay. Where on? I have no idea what's going on. I feel like I just got inverted somehow. Like, that looks like... Oh, there's a Nautilus here, like the one I found out there. So I am seeing some really interesting architecture here. Finally get to talk about something I, I know a little bit about. Um, so we've got some columns and uh, very triangular structures as I swim in a circle here. Come on. So these, these, can I swim through them? Yeah, they're just images. Um, but the sort of carved out ceilings, that reminds me of nothing so much as, not hollow earth aliens. <laughs> um, that reminds me a lot of Islamic architecture, actually. There's a lot of really beautiful ceiling work that is carved wood, and they'll carve it downwards and then put it upside down above you so you can see. Um, they don't go in for a lot of straight lines, though. What you'll see mostly is curves, um, a lot of non-figurative work. You do see a lot of stars, I suppose, but not really triangles um, like you have here. Um, so if this is a far future Earth, I would expect some, some influence from Islamic art. And you see that star in the center there. You see that a lot in Islamic art too. And that's actually, so the idea is that um, four points is um, the highest achievement of normal man. Like that represents like how, how complexly we can understand the world. And then like the wisest man who ever lived would get the Star of Solomon, the eight-pointed star. And anything more than that, which is just, you know, a square over a square. And in anything more than that is God. No, no man could ever achieve. So we see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve-pointed star for God, uh, perhaps. <laughs> But then we have some other interesting stuff. We have, I mean, definitely they are, if this Nautilus figure is somehow a part of, oof, haven't quite gotten the hang of swimming around yet. I'm going to try re-inverting the swim and see if that helps. But I think the problem is that I keep changing direction when I really just want to swim. How big is this thing that I'm still not close to it? So I wonder if we're going to be finding stuff and coming back here. Sorry if my ineptitude with the controls is frustrating. It is frustrating to me as well. Um, so I do want to go and see what this is. That seems to be where our guide... Whoop, nope, 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 not leaving yet. is pointing us this little trail of light on the surface question mark of the ocean so 
square columns, a much more modern thing than you will see. So what, what is this? What? What? Uh, manta rays. Gorgeous, but what? I have a lot of questions. Okay, so whatever we just did, some kind of tech interaction just healed the ocean. Oh, and look at those gorgeous doors, carved like coral. So whatever this civilization was, I mean, this, this column appears to have done some, some healing magic, but also, like... What's the deal with down? I kind of wish I had explored more before I went in there then. Because that looks very different. Oh, am I not allowed to go down there? Because this is still water. But when I go in there, it pops me back out. And look, it's giving off these bubbles. I wonder... And that seemed to be rising when... when the life came back. <laughs> so... What's it like above the surface here? Not given a lot of clues, really. Um, well, I wonder what. Nope, nope, I don't want to dive. Okay, so I can move. So I can't swim through the top of the kelp. I have not figured this game out yet. There seems to be very little up here on the surface. So some kind of like are we out in the sargasso? Is that what's happening? <laughs> um, okay, let's dive again. See what we can see. So we've got our bots. Hey friend Manta. Can I ride on you? I would like to ride a manta ray. Do we have that tech? Are we friends enough with the mantas? I lost sight of all of them. There they are. Manta friend! No. No ride prompt. I wonder if we can go back. Not that I have any idea which way back is. Oh! Let's look at this tile work. This, again, well, fine. Do that thing where it reorients me. This is very sort of... Ah, stop it. <laughs> I'm so bad at orienting myself in this game. 
Okay. So this this up here, the very geometric pattern, this does also look like Levantine tile work to me. Um, not only in the rich blues of it, but also in the geometric patterns. It's in a star shape. It's actually a Star of David. So maybe more Jewish than Islamic, but honestly, blue tile work in particular is something I associate very heavily with uh, with Islamic artwork. Oh, my cat just put a paw on my knee. So cute. Okay, so here we're getting to some broken tiles, some crumbled columns. Let me see that very geometric column shape with golden column heads. That's not a classical style of anywhere I recognize. Is this sand? So. And these doors, when they were opening, had some like coral looking patterns that might also have been tile work. This is interesting. The sort of natural walls alongside rich tiling. Is it decayed or is it built that way? Okay, stop that. Whoa, hello, hi, hello, excuse me, I need to look at this thing. And I am very bad at orienting myself. <laughs> In the dark I look like a little cat. Alright, so here we're playing with some Egyptian looking things. Um, we have these fascinating sort of glyphs. Um, I don't know if they actually work out to any kind of language or not. I suppose I could try and figure that out. But they look kind of like hieroglyphics, right? They have, you know, your squiggly three, three wave marks, things that look like turtles and different kinds of fish. Uh, scales, shells, things that are around, but also these sort of geometric shapes. Um, and then of course the people are very, um, very Egyptian looking. They have the sort of tunic and skirt uh, options that you see, and uh, we saw in the Forgotten City, that the men wear these kind of long linen skirts with the, the pleats down the front. Um, the hoods I'm not so sure about, but definitely the collars, also very Egyptian. Um, the fact that you can see all of their limbs, um, like that they're very like stylized and sideways, a very common feature of early Egyptian art. I say early, but like... I want an Egyptologist on Brianna, come help me out. <laughs> um, and then we we have them carrying these pots. Are they pots? It's hard to tell. Um, some possibly kelp leaves, the little fronds. And then that might be the doorway we just came through, honestly. And above it, there are some more pot shapes, the the sort of crystal tower looking object. And those look to me almost like trilobites. Of course, the very non-Egyptian thing about this wall, like you don't often see paintings on tile. Especially when the tile is not shaped, like it's just regular up and down tile or bricks. You don't really see a lot of that. It's usually carved before it's painted. 
And while there might be lines of stonework, you wouldn't see the sort of intentional regular tiling. And we do also see here, that, like, at the top and, and the bottom, it does almost look like the rock has grown over it. Um, and that might be, I mean, this is a high-tech civilization we're looking at, so <laughs> that might be an intentional design feature. Or it might be that these are crystalline structures, um, which is to say crystal crystal forms will grow in certain patterns. Like if you see like columnar crystals in like quartz or um, mica, or mica, sorry. Um, and like we do definitely have these stalactites that have formed in the water, right? So, uh, um, and if you've ever seen, say, the Giant's Causeway in Ireland, um, so, so it may well actually have grown here. Oh my gosh, I just noticed these jellies. I was so taken. Or did they just appear? I don't know. <laughs> like, I got so lost talking about the wall. I didn't even look at this wall yet, but just look at these. Oh, beautiful moon jelly looking things. But they're too big to be actual moon jellies. Um, but uh, we do have a question, which is... Uh, what does water and flooding tend to do to ancient paint and similar de decorations? Which is a good question. As you can see here that this is eroded, but not greatly. Um, water and paint don't tend to mesh well, obviously. Most paint is water-soluble. Not all paint. Not all paint is water-soluble. Oil paint does not tend to be water-soluble. You need oil to work, like a, or a turpentine to, to really deal with that. But flooding will tend to wear away, well, flooding will wear away anything. Flooding will wear away stone over time. Um, so paint really doesn't stand a chance. And depending on how old these decorations are, like, this just... I mean, we don't have any sense of how long ago these were put here. Because um, clearly, as much as it reminds me of Egyptian art, it isn't. Uh, these are not actual hieroglyphs, or at least not not most of them. Um, and And when you see Egyptian people in paintings and carvings, they don't quite look like that. They have more features on the face, um, and yellow is not a very common color. However, I do want to note their reasonable similarity to us with our little yellow cat ears and such, and our face, which is blank black except for the eyes. Um, so Tiling, ceramic tile, does actually hold up really well underwater. Um, ceramics tend to last a very long time, uh, partially because they are, their structure is porous. Um, so, like, these tiles could absolutely be ancient, but the paint, well, if it were actually ancient from our perspective, certainly not. <laughs> Um, you might see scraps of it, but nothing nothing like this. Um, however, it is possible that this is some kind of high-tech waterproof paint, and clearly there's something going on with the water in this area that is not just water. So, lots of, lots of caveats to be had there. Now if I can get myself to turn around and come look at this... We have another wall of painting. Um, it appears to be uh, almost map-like. Um, like there's some kind of structure here. Um, we can see that there are three windows in one, two, in six different areas. They are painted with 
sort of abstractions, but we can clearly see that this first one up here is sort of kelp. Um, and then there's fish, and uh, that looks like a blue whale to be, so that's exciting. We're gonna get to ride a whale. Oh my god, I might get to ride a whale. And these look... well, maybe they're statues. They might be statues. Um, and then like a full-on architectural grid, and then who knows what that is. <laughs> it looks like a, like a plasma, but it also could be the sun. The scene from underwater. Now one thing I will note gameplay-wise is that we can see the Nautilus shell here, the one I've found presumably, has appeared here, which means likely that there are two more of those glowing shapes somewhere in the kelp area. And we also see the Nautilus shell symbol over this wall, uh, which otherwise really quite looks like um, an Egyptian falcon pattern. You see uh, images of, of Ra, the sun god, the falcon, that have these spread out eagle wings, and then in the center they have a sun. Um, and you might see that on a wall, you might see it on, on like a pectoral disc, all sorts of things. So there's, there's a bit of an Islamic vibe, a bit of an Egyptian vibe. Um, lots of stuff going on. So, I don't know whether I want to go that way or back, but I... Oof. Come on. Face the way I think I'm facing. Nope, not quite. Nope, not quite. I want to see what's out there. Oh, we see those little kelp shapes. With the oh no, my bot! How rude! My poor bot. But we do see these little kelp shapes, like they were carrying with them in the uh, in the painting. There's so much down here. I wonder what, how far down we can go. Oh. Oh, hey! There's another Nautilus shell. Oh, and we've got lots of bottom dwellers. We have horseshoe crabs. And lobsters. Am I close enough to interact? I am. So I've got another Nautilus shell. What are you? Are you a sea pig? No, you're a crab. Hello, crab friend. I like all of the space. And they're clearly, they have the same sand physics as they had in Journey, which, oh, maybe not. But I like, huh? What was that? Something is pinging. I don't. Wow. Do 
Too far, too far. This is absolutely fascinating. I was told, I looked up on uh, how long to beat. And this is supposed to be a two hour game. I think we're gonna have a bit more than that of me talking. What gorgeous scenery. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> oh well. No, I want to stay down here. Look, look, it's one of those things. Ooh, look, it's some wreckage. This looks very much like what was on the wall up top. I wonder I wonder what it is. Some kind of remnant, obviously. Must be a ritual object. Okay. Come on. Go this way. Ooh, more sea turtles. So, I guess I'm going around and releasing critters into the environment and sort of healing it, which is a very it's a very flower sort of sentiment. I like it. Huh. Maybe it's just telling me that's the edge of where I can go. There are no more to find on the ocean bed. Okay. Oh, that looks precarious. The water clearly wearing away that stone. Well, I wonder what this triangle does. I guess we could find out. Maybe it's unfriendly. Turtles. It's blinking at me. Oh. OK. 
Okay. So these are passageways. So there used to be another passageway somewhere around here, and that got knocked out. I'm guessing that's the tunnel we came through, in fact. But let's see what's beyond this door. Another area. Who would have thought? We have a little triangle symbol as our loading symbol. I like that. It ties into the whole decoration scheme. Oh! It closed behind us. Oh no. Does that mean we can't go back? We've lost our bot friends. Well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, I think we're leaving the kelp area. And now we are in the fishes. Whoa. <gasps> Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't appear to have a lot of control at this point. Like, I can control the camera, but... And now I can't control the camera anymore, either. Uh, are those dolphins? Surely not. Not this deep. Oh uh, yeah, I guess we're not that deep right now. If that's the surface. Those might be dolphins. Um, you can tell that they're not fish because the tail. Um, the fish, fish tails generally go side to side, whereas... Uh, aquatic mammals often have tails that go up and down. I mean, that's not strictly necessary to life. Um, I don't know if it's, like, all the way, all true all the time, right? Because sometimes you get fish that have, like, weird sideways builds. Oh, there's our shark. Who ate one of my bots? Okay, I have a little control again. Not a ton. Oh. And here we are. This open area completely different look. Uh, we're gonna have to find new bots. We've got a coral zone over there. Got new music. And presumably there will be more ruins to find somewhere. Down, down, down. Oh, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo. I don't know what would grow in that rose pattern. There we go. Ooh, gray reef sharks. Most sharks are actually pretty friendly. Um, don't care that- oh, hello, statue! Is that- Is that a shark sphinx? Oh my gosh, that is a shark sphinx. 
What in the world? Uh, right, so again, with the sort of... sort of Egyptian-style carving, although it's too geometric, it's too exaggerated. That style of, of mountain cat, it's very sort of modern. Um, and then the oddly realistic, um, as in like curved and, and detailed sort of shark head. Oh, hello. Press X to meditate. Let us meditate. Let us meditate upon the ocean. Azure damselfish. Oop, I didn't mean to bring us out of the meditation. Oh, okay, so apparently what meditate does is it picks a fish and just sort of follows them around, shows the name, and I can switch using the left stick. Oh, but we only have two options. No, oh, we have more options, okay. Blue tang, angelfish, oh no, bannerfish, my bad. And now we're back to the damselfish. So, <laughs> so that just allows us to watch the sea life float by. Um, I mean, they did a very beautiful job with this. I just, I don't quite know what the deal is. Um. Oh, and there we are, outside our own body, I guess. <laughs> so our, our resident prankster says, what swims with four fins in the morning? I guess in regard to our Sharko Sphinx. Um, you know, I think that's <laughs> probably a good place to stop for the day. So we will come back for part two. Uh, next week at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Hope you're enjoying. Keep learning, friends.